on side of an argument, isn't it? Because the, um, there are always um, different sides um, to an argument. Um, one might say that, for instance, the moderating inflation in Nigeria bucks the international trend. Um, globally, you're having, um, due to rising food prices and rising energy prices, you have an inflationary um, trend going on. Um, secondly, uh, we look at the short-term likelihood of a significant, a significant um, liquidity expansion. You've got Amcon uh, purchasing non-performing loans from banks. You've got Amcon injecting capital into those banks. You've got an election year um, coming up, um, uh, and elections in April. And usually in the run-up to elections, you have a lot of spending. Um, you have all prices going up, and therefore the cost of subsidies um, going down. Now, what will happen is either the government increases its borrowing because it has to fund subsidies, uh, or there's a shortfall in revenues as NMPC pays the subsidies, or the subsidy is adjusted and the price of uh, petroleum products goes up, or maybe there's a scarcity of petroleum products uh, because of the uh, limited ability of the government to fund um, the same quantity um, that has been funded in the past. Um, so either way, uh, we think that the rising um, uh, uh, cost of uh, fuel imports, the rising specter of increasing liquidity um, in, in the system uh, will find, will create cheap money, which will find its way into either rising prices um, in the goods market or an asset bubble in the capital market or um, increased pressure in the foreign exchange market and uh, depreciation of the Naira. What more can the NPC or the CBN do really to improve private sector credit, which the NPC also noted is fairly weak? But that's really not the role of the MPC, the role of the central bank itself. And this is what the MPC keeps pointing out. There's a limit to how much you can achieve by simply um, putting, putting money on the balance sheet of banks. Um, it's, that's a supply side issue. Um, but, and credit is the nexus between capital, liquidity, and, ri and risk. So um, a bank can have all the capital and all the liquidity in the world. It will only lend if it is satisfied with the risk profile of the counterparty. And that involves um, things like um, risk sharing um, instruments, which we're trying to develop, say, for agriculture and for SMEs guarantees. Um, it also involves um, a change in um, government policy. It involves a proper industrial policy, protection, incentives, taxation. And all of those have to be in place. So uh, the point I think the MPC was making is, look, um, it's not uh, uh, tightening or easing has not g really led to an increase or reduction in private sector credit. In fact, all the, all the money has gone to government. Basically, um, credit to government has been increasing. Uh, what we need to do is address those structural bottlenecks that have um, blocked the flow of credit to those areas. Let's put it this way, at the central bank government, what are your expectations? You did note last year that you thought that the credit, private sector credit might not pick up until the first quarter of this year. What are your expectations for this year? I think we've had a little delay um, in the resolution of, of the banking system issues, but I think um, most of them will be resolved by March, April. And once the banks are out of the woods, right now you've got two banks that are totally out of the woods. We're just monitoring them. Um, Wema Bank has met all ratios. Unity Bank has met all ratios. Um, we're monitoring the activity to make sure that, I mean, we say it's like a patient coming out of hospital. You, you basically keep him under observation just to make sure that he's fine. But those banks are, are, out, are out there. Um, I think four or five, uh, by the time you hear the announcements, I, at least four, uh, the fifth um, possible um, in the next few weeks, um, we, we should know um, that they've signed MOUs and they're heading out. So once that is fixed and confidence comes back, uh, we begin to see um, an increase in credit. But we will not see a significant and rapid increase in credit because the structural problems in the real economy have not yet been addressed. Remember, we still need to do the power reforms. We still need to have the proper PPP framework in place and have investments into infrastructure. Uh, and we are pursuing, along with AGRA, um, a risk-sharing arrangement for agricultural lending, and we need to do all of that. Let's talk about the process to sell the rescued banks. I mean, there are allegations, for instance, that some of the current CEOs are looking to bid for these banks themselves. I mean, I have, uh, people have made allegations. What is the evidence? Anybody can make an allegation. Anybody can accuse you of trying to acquire a bank. Uh, these are just, y y you see, the shareholders who are trying to frustrate the process in some of these banks. 
we need to understand that under Bofia, they really can't stop anything. The powers given to the central bank are so wide-ranging in the event of a bank in a grave situation, we have simply chosen not to invoke those powers. You own a bank that has negative share capital, a bank that is at the moment a creditor-owned bank. Your management used depositors' funds to buy shares. Those shares are now held by the bank itself under our control or held by Amcon. Amcon is going to end up owning 55, 60% of those banks. So who are the shareholders? And so the, we, what we're trying to do is manage a process so that after the merger process, we don't have to remain engaged. And the people who are in their management, staff, shareholders, actually get a sense that we saved their bank and left them with something. But, te but, but technically, um, all you've got to do is liquidate the bank and sell it to whoever you want to sell it to, and that's it. Well, can you just clarify, is any of the CEOs of any of the rescued banks bidding for any of these banks? I'm not aware that any of the CEOs has expressed any interest in investing, and they are not investing. And if they were investing, they would tell me. You know, um, I am yet to see any evidence. I know uh, the, the parties that are engaging with the banks. We've done our due diligence on those parties. We know where the money is coming from. Some of them are banks and some of them are private equity firms and we know who the partners are.